Well building in Unreal Engine allows the creation of vast stunning architectural scenes and environments. However, understanding how these are put together or how they work behind the scenes can be very challenging to say the least. So for this video, I will run through three high quality scenes you can download in Unreal for free to dive into and break down ideas and assets behind it all. These examples will cover areas from dynamic environmental controls in complex material shaders, to scenes creating immersive natural environments or even complete cities full with navigation and controls. Just to note, these are quite advanced scenes, so if you fully want to understand them, you will need some technical knowledge of Unreal Engine. Although for the most part, you can just download the scenes and navigate around to get a quick feel. First up is the City Sample Project. This can be downloaded from the marketplace. Provided by Epic Games themselves, it is a city scene from the Matrix Awakens experience and demonstrates how to use Unreal Engine 5 to bring a huge city to life. I will start by saying that although these environments are free to download, they often have very large file sizes and demanding computing requirements, such as the city sample project here, which is over 100 gigabytes after being loaded up. And once you do open it, you are welcomed by a long list of recommended specs. You will need a powerful GPU and a high RAM capacity. Although it will work with something like 32 gigabytes of RAM and most modern RTX cards, but it just may struggle. Since this city is massive, it uses a world partition system, so you can load smaller sections. You can find this by opening the partition panel from the drop down here. To actually view the world, you will need to open the level maps as listed here, which you can find in the content drawer under maps. So best to start with the small city map. And in the world partition panel that you opened, you can drag a rectangle over an area, right click and load it. You will then have this great learning resource where you can walk or fly around as a metahuman, which is all very intuitive to use. So you can explore the roads, streets and buildings. What is particularly special about the scene is the use of crowds and car animations, complete with collisions. So if you want to check out how this is done, you can go to the crowd folder in the content browser and find these blueprints. And you can see the paths used for these simulations. Best to also take a look in the event graph where you can see scripts for collisions, for example. In a similar fashion, if you go to the vehicles folder, there's already a test map. You can load this and hit play. You would then have a car with full controls, speedometer, and even taking damage. You then have the navigation to get out of the car and have third person controls. Once again, all the blueprints are in the folder, and this is a great scene to find out how to use the mass simulation. If you go back to the main level, we can take a look at more of the building assets, such as the window mappings, which are just textured for optimization. Or take a look at some of the building components for your own projects. You can get a breakdown of these by going to the building folder, NY, and opening up this map. All the components are nicely labeled and arranged, so you can make your own modules. Next up is the Hillside Sample Project. This is an architectural project which explores the original vision by Habitat 67 by Safdi Architects and visualized here by Neoscape. This sample project is also released by Epic Games and is packed full of features for high definition rendering and optimized real time assets. It comes complete with documentation to guide you along. Once again, it is a rather large file size at over 60 gigabytes with some heavy computing power needed. This vast architectural scene is great to learn how to make high quality real time environments while maintaining optimization. Note that this is an educational resource for learning about Armeo's features and also not for commercial use. If you want to go straight to the cinematics to see the fancy visuals and animations, you'll find these under cinematics and renders. You can tweak these environmental tracks on the bottom left to see how they are created and change certain parameters. If you go to the movies folder, you can open up the whole movie composition and see how the art direction was used for this. Materials are also worth checking out, as a lot of effort has gone into creating these. In the material library, under exterior, 
the concrete is a good example to look at, since it is the primary material in these units. They have been parameterized, so that each unit has subtle randomness, and you can control the tiny details such as the dirt, age, and cracks to create variety. Another amazing example is the wooden decking. You can once again change the randomness and the age of the decking. But in this shader, you even have leaf effects. These are built in as a great way of optimizing the scene. You can change the density and even the shadows. The more complex material parameter collections are also worth taking a look at. In this example of the fake interior, you can control all the interior mappings from blinds to interior types and even the furniture or without any complex geometry needed. There's a great way to see the different maps. Tude project is also a great demonstration of using Lumen and Nanite for real-time optimization. Lumen is Unreal Engine 5's fully dynamic global illumination and reflection system, while Nanite is a virtualized geometry system. And without getting too technical, it bypasses the use of draw calls and greatly improves game performance. So these make a powerful combo. If you change from lit view to nanite visualization, you can see how the mesh can be analyzed and hierarchical clusters are being created when nanite is active. You can change the view settings to get different visualizations of the clustering and optimization. There's a lot of documentation on how this works. And if you're creating large scenes, it is definitely worth learning about. Finally, to end with a fantastic natural environment with this Australia pack. In contrast to the previous two examples, this is a pack which can be added directly into a project and is only 2.4 gigabytes in size. Here I have added it to a blank architectural template and if you go directly to the maps folder, you can open up the content level to browse the assets available nicely lined up from effects to props and to natural elements that can be scattered. In the example 01 level, you can see how all these can be assembled into a photorealistic and dynamic scene. These example maps include procedurally populated landscapes and the props are all distributed along splines such as the roads and fences here. Some of my favorite assets you'll find under effects. In the birds folder, you can drag out one of these Niagara systems and you get animated birds for your scene instantly. And besides this, you can try out the falling leaves which work in the same way. You can move the gizmo to any location and leave spawn from under this point. To accompany this, you can also add an audio of wild sounds from Australia. There are a few levels for this pack. If you're interested in water scenes, the example O2 scene is worth opening up. This water texture is an interesting one for customizing ripple effects, quality water and reflections. You can also check out all the cameras set up in the outliner to get a better idea of what is possible with all these natural assets and flick between them all. This was just a quick overview of three amazing environmental scenes for you to try out and see what is possible in Unreal Engine and learning by example. However, I do recommend to spend more time breaking down the scenes and understanding the assets so you can incorporate them into your own world building.